I'm Gleb Alexandrov, and this is the introduction slash promo video for Nebula, a video course on creating procedural nebulae in Blender. So in the next couple of minutes I'll tell you more about this course so you can feel more comfortable knowing what's in store and how we've got there and how your journey with 3D Nebulae may begin. Our journey began with a bang, I wish I could say. Actually, it wasn't like that. Our path to volumetric space rendering wasn't a cakewalk. Back in 2016 we released our first space-themed project, Space VFX, and even though it looked pretty good, back at the time we were still mostly relying on the pseudo-volumetric effects for rendering gas clouds, like 2D textures and flat planes. Looking with envy we were at the real volumetric space art of Tion van der Zalm and other amazing creators, the stuff like that was way out of reach for us Blender users. Usually made in the software better tailored for massive simulations like Houdini, usually very demanding to computer hardware and so hard to teach. Meanwhile, our fluid simulation experiments looked like that at the time. The procedural shading attempts were at first nothing to write home about either. Like what is this blob even? Proto shrimp, perhaps? But actually, there was one demo in the original Space VFX that set our intuition bells ringing. This one. The two spheres droning in the swirling mist. It wasn't spectacular or anything, but it featured a real volume shader with a procedural texture. It wasn't perfect, the final result still had to be smeared with tons of post processing to hide the lack of details. But the fact that a simple noise algorithm combined with the volume shading can help visualize the vibrant organic interstellar shapes, it got us thinking. So we clinged onto this idea and the next couple of years went under the sign of the noise. When we say noise, we mean a procedural generation algorithm, like the default blender noise. In technical terms, it's a Perlin noise, named after Ken Perlin, who developed it in 1983 as a result of his frustration with the machine-like look of computer-generated imagery at the time. The thing about this and other noises is that they can work in three dimensions, meaning that uh, they can be plugged into the volume shaders, which also produce three-dimensional data, so these things combined can produce beautiful volumetric structures that are random but ordered. The structures that resemble interstellar clouds the structure is generated procedurally. There is a caveat. It would look good only if you give it the right settings, like if you know the Nebula special code, which proved to be not easy. Fast track the part where the protagonists are learning the procedural kung fu, practicing punches and kicks for days and weeks and eventually months to beat that super noise villain, not without the help from the blended community. Speaking about communal spirit, we got help and inspiration from Samuel Krug, Simon Thomas, Brent Patterson, Gottfried Hoffman, Clement Foucault, Mark Kingsnorth, Jonas Dichel, Curtis Holt, Tim Bart, and Tien van der Zalm, Stephen Wern, Hans Chiu, and many other 3D artists and developers. We weren't alone in this journey. Still, it took us a few long years to crack that code. At the Blender Conference 2019 we were finally able to present our fully volumetric procedural nebulae, all rendered in Blender, in cycles. It was something that wasn't too far from the reference imagery we had in mind. The imagery we had thought had been completely out of reach, now rendered in a free and open source software. After this significant conference we were buzzing with enthusiasm and basically wanted to start the ball rolling on recording a video course about the whole process right after getting back home. As you can tell, it was an overly ambitious plan. It took us a couple more years to actually fulfill this, I wouldn't say promise, but okay, essentially a promise to ourselves and to everyone supporting us. We used this time to polish all the aspects of the workflow and smooth out the rough edges, all to actually make it shareable and make sure it runs on the average GPU because not everyone has a NASA supercomputer at home. And so, please welcome Nebula, the ultimate guide to creating Nebula in Blender. So, in the first introductory chapter we will cover the very basics of using volume shaders and procedural textures. What is density, how to control it, how to fill the volume with 3D noises in Blender. It is important to get acquainted with the essentials and make our first volume cube, so to speak, before moving on to more complex subjects. Next, we'll get our hands dirty and actually apply the principles and techniques of Cycles volume rendering to create a simple interstellar cloudscape. 
After watching it, you'll become familiar with the noise patterns and how to actually plug the nodes in such a way as to create the super noise, the texture that is perfect for that kind of job and produces the patterns resembling natural phenomena. Then things will get even more exciting in the advanced Nebula tutorial. In this one, we'll start to explore powerful procedural shading techniques such as gradients and vector math operations to imitate the physical forces such as gravity, repulsion, attraction or the vortex force. If you're starting from scratch, no prior algebra knowledge is required, everything will be shown and explained step by step. The next part will bring the geometry nodes to the table. You'll learn how to create procedural point clouds, assign different colors to particles, almost suggesting the composition of different types of gases inside the nebula, and let them mix by applying a 3D displacement to it. Here we will also imitate dynamic forces for giving our nebula the swirling and blasting out appearance for the ultimate control over its look. Naturally, it will be followed up by the shading tutorial. The basic principles of authoring materials for the geometry nodes, clouds, composed of atoms, so to speak, or points rather, and how to combine different elements like color, emission or transparency to form the majestic looking results. Just to spark your curiosity, here it won't be a volume shader. And still, to look believable, the point clouds have to be really, really dense to create the impression of a massive continuous gas and dust cloud. So in the next part, we will have a look at what densifying techniques do exist and what are the best practices of rendering point clouds in such a way to make them look really, really thick, just like volumes. In the fascinating world of nebula creation techniques, there is a place for really fast methods as well, which render almost in real time on the average hardware. So in the next video, we'll dissect one of these methods using pure emission or 3D light and absorption. After watching it, you'll acquire the skills to generate an infinite style nebula fly through rendered in cycles. It would be a shame to not use this opportunity to talk about a simple method of procedural stars creation, to scatter a random number of glowing orbs around even though AD will talk about it in more detail in later tutorials. When it comes to space art and to procedural art specifically, sometimes it can be hard to understand what works and what doesn't, what looks beautiful and what needs to be tweaked. That's why we give you the theoretical video on the principles of the beautiful nebulae design as well. The majority of the course relies on the power of Blender's path tracing cycles render engine, though Blender does have the very cool EV render engine that can in some cases be much faster to render. The kinds of volumetric results tend to be much softer than cycles, but despite that, EV definitely deserves its own section, where we explore some of what EV has to offer when hurling a camera through deep space to create a nebula fly through effect. To go hand in hand with the nebula, we can give a little more interest with some literal shine. That is to say, we're going over a few different options for creating some accompanying stars. And there is more. Stay updated by following our social media, where we announce all the updates, reworked videos, new project files and other stuff not mentioned in this video. Speaking about the project files, as usual, all the necessary resources are bundled with the course and are available for download. What else? Uh, there's a special Discord channel for the course owners, where you can share your work in progress shots, ask questions and chat with other students. Oh, the hardware requirements though. A decent GPU is definitely recommended, even though the methods presented in the course should work reasonably well on most mid-range GPUs with only minimum amount of fire extinguishers on standby, still it's about ray tracing and volume rendering and this stuff has never been a breeze to render. Aside from that, the basic familiarity with the Blender's user interface is a must-have, as it isn't the course for absolute beginners. Thank you for watching. It has been a long journey, but the Nebula course is finally out and available for purchase at Blender Market and Gumroad. And you can always check our website creativeshrimp.com. My name is Gleb Alexandrov, I'll be your guide in the world of Blender Nebulae, Adeboros will be helping too, of course. Get ready to embark on a cosmic journey and learn to create fantastic nebulae in Blender. See you!